Hey there! In this video I'll show the assembly process for a hex C pad. It's this 12 key hexagonal marker pad. And so let's get started. What you'll need is the kit, of course. You'll also need 12 chalk key switches, like these. These are chalk brown uh, tactile keys, in this case. And inside of the kit we'll find uh, the keycaps. So I'll just set these aside for the moment. The kit also contains the PCB, of course. Uh, the PCB already has the SMT components pre-assembled, so we will not have to solder those. And here's the, the hardware kit, containing screws, spacers, washers. The top plate is the thinner one. And lastly, there's also the bottom plate, which is wrapped in an extra layer of paper for perfection. Inside the hardware kit you'll find a little square with these four silicone rubber feet, uh, four M2 screws with a very flat head, a hex key and a bunch of washers and spacers. Before getting started, um, if you want to remove these little mouse bites that can be found on the PCB, I would recommend doing that as the very first thing with a little file. Uh, it's best to do this outside uh, because the dust can be harmful to your lungs. Then for the actual assembly, the first step is to start with the top plate and figure out which side is up. So I should be putting the switches in from the side that doesn't have little relief cuts so that they can snap into place. Also make sure to put in the switches in the right orientation. The T-shaped stem should be in this upright position. It can be quite hard to push the switches into place, but I've found that that also depends on the switches themselves. So for example the brown keys that I have here, I've found that they're pretty hard to press into place, while the white switches that I've used for example have gone in very easily. The next step is to add the screws. Uh, so I'll just drop in the, the four screws from the top. Once the screws are in place, you'll want to use some tape to tape over the tops of them to hold them in place because in the very next step we're going to flip this over and we want to have them in place and not fall out the bottom. I'm using this uh, Kapton tape here, uh, which I like to use because it doesn't leave any residue at all, uh, but if you use something else that should also be fine. Uh, in the worst case, you might want to wash the top of the metal plate after with some alcohol. Once the plate is flipped over, add a washer on each of the four screws. This can be a little bit finicky. Now you can put the PCB on top of the plate. It should be facing this way with the USB port on the top. You might need to jiggle it around a bit or use tweezers to adjust some of the screws to get them through at the same time. And once it's in place you can just check by eye that each of the little solder pads um, for each of the little keys has uh, a leg poking through it. If it doesn't, you might um, have bent one of the pins and you have to fix that now before you start soldering the other pads. So now it's time to solder. So I'm gonna get out a soldering iron and just solder each of the 12 key switches in place. Each of them has two legs, so that's 24 little solder joints um, to, to solder. Depending on the solder that you've used, you might want to clean the PCB of any flux residue. Uh, so here I'm using just some paper towels and isopropanol alcohol to clean the, to just wipe off uh, any flux residue from the board. 
now it's time to put on the rest of the spacers and washers. The order doesn't really matter, but on each of the screws you'll want to add two washers and one spacer. With that done, you can take the bottom plate, turn it around so that the USB cutout is facing the circuit board and so that you can see the engravings on the bottom and just place it on top of the screws. So you should be able to feel when the screws line up with the holes and then you can take everything and flip it back around. Next, go ahead and remove the tape and try to be careful not to lift the screw out with the tape as you do this. And then you can go ahead and use the Allen key that's included with the kit to screw the screws into place. Since the plates are just aluminum, try not to over tighten them. Just make sure that they're snug. And if you do accidentally remove a screw like I do here, um, probably it's possible to just drop it back in like I managed here. And if, uh, if it doesn't quite line up, you could use some tweezers maybe to get the washers back into place and make sure that the screw just passes straight through all of the different layers of spacers. Now you can flip the board back over and add the four rubber feet. You can just pull them off the backing tape with your fingernails and add them into the four cutouts on the back of the bottom plate. And now finally it's time for the last step to put on the keycaps. So as you pick them up you can make note of the orientation of the two little legs on the back and uh, just push them into place. It can take a little bit of force uh, but once you push them down all the way you can feel them kind of hit the, the limit of motion. and. Then you can move on to the next one. And that's it, so now it's time to test it out. And as soon as you plug it in, it should go into the test animation. Looks better with the lights off. And uh, in the default config, these top uh, two keys uh, are used for cycling through the RGB patterns, uh, so you can try out the lighting right away. Depending on how much soldering experience you have, the whole process should take something between 15 and 30 minutes. But if you'd like to buy a fully assembled unit, you can also find these in my store and there's a link in the description. Thanks for watching!